Okay guys, so in this lecture today we are going to build uh, a head model. We're going to use uh, edge flow modeling technique. Um, so you went to the uh, Kong and you grabbed the uh, PO3DM uh, head model folder. Inside of there we have a uh, scenes directory and inside of there we have a ref directory. These are the um, images we want. We've got the head model one, which is the front. Uh, color coded so that we can tell uh, what edge corresponds to what and then we have a side and then we have a back view okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and open up uh, 3ds max So the cool thing about this base mesh is that once you get it constructed, you can just keep reusing it. Uh, I probably haven't built one of these in years. Um, you just keep it lying around and then you can basically distort it to, uh, to any form that you need to build for a head. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to go to the front orthographic viewport. And I'm going to create a standard primitive and I'm going to do a box. I'm going to hold down my control key to make it completely square and then Make it a good, you know, 20 by 20 units or something. That's good. And then uh, depth, we don't care because I'm actually going to set that uh, under the modifier tab. So I'm going to right click to exit box creation mode. And then I'm going to go to the modifier tab for the box. And for the height, I just want to give it like a 0.1 or something, which is basically going to give a thickness of uh, paper thin. Okay. Then what we need to do is we want to assign a texture map to this because this is basically just a reference plane. So I'm going to go to my image, which is right here. I'm just going to open it up in uh, Windows Explorer here. And then I'm going to... I'm going to close this other Max. I didn't know I had two Maxes open. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go into Windows Explorer. And I just want to grab this image, the front view, and I'm going to drag it right onto my plane to texture map it onto there. Again, you want to confirm that this is in your front ortho, and we can do that by going here to the wireframe tab and clicking on shaded. And then I'm going to hit the G key here to hide my grid because I don't like to see the grid. All right. And then what I want to do here is I'm going to maximize my perspective viewport. I'm going to hit the G key here to hide the grid as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, box here that we just created. And I'm going to create an identical copy of this box. So I'm going to click on the angle snaps. I'm going to hit the E key for rotate mode. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and rotate my box here 90 degrees, negative 90. And create a copy of the object. Once that's done, what I want to do is I want to go to my other image, which is the side view, and I'm going to drag and drop that right onto that plane that I just duplicated and created. And so what I have here now is I have a front view and I have a side view. And what I want to do here is I want to turn off this realistic shading because you see how we have this annoying shadow here, which really gets in the way. It looks pretty when you have your scene completely modeled, but when you're modeling your scene, it's kind of annoying. So I'm going to change that to shade it. And there we go. That's our base uh, our base mesh. This would be a good time uh, to save the scene out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do a save as. And I'm going to save it to my desktop in that same folder. Scenes. And I'm going to call it head model 04 because I already did one of these earlier today. So... And there we go. So now if you guys uh, had to crash uh, Max and restart, you wouldn't uh, lose everything. You'd be able to get back to where you were. Okay. So now that we have that done, what we want to do here is we want to go into the front ortho. So I'm going to hit Alt-W to maximize that. And we're going to build this section of the face first. So where this little red line is coming all the way around the side. <coughs> So just that section. That's where probably 70 to 80% of the detail is in the face. 
So we're going to model that first. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to start with, I'm going to say create standard primitives, and I'm going to do a plane. And I'm going to just make a plane right here where this first polygon is here, just above the bridge of the nose. And then I'm going to exit plane creation mode. And you can see something here. See how my plane keeps like kind of snapping in and out of visibility? Sometimes it's hiding, sometimes it's showing. Uh, the reason for that is because my reference plane here is actually right on the origin, and so is that plane I just created. So if I want to keep that clipping plane from freaking out on me, all I have to do is select my reference plane and just kind of pull it back behind the origin so that my plane that I just created is in front of it. Okay? So now that I'm going to go ahead and select my plane again here, go back to the front orthographic viewport, maximize it, what I want to do is I want to hit the J key to hide that bounding box. I'm going to hit F4 for edged faces, so edges on uh, polygons. And then I'm going to hit Alt-X for X-ray, so I want to make that thing semi-transparent. And then uh, if yours was like mine, the default settings for this plane, it has some extra segments, and I want to get rid of those. So I'm going to select the modifier tab while I'm holding the plane. And under length and width segments, I'm going to dial that down to one and one so that I just have a single polygon plane with four edges and four vertices. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and that's it. Just simple polygon. All right, once I have that created, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that guy and convert it to an editable poly. And once I've converted it to an editable poly, the first thing I want to do is I want to go into vertex mode. And I just want to move these points a little bit to coincide with my reference art here. And so I'm just basically wherever I see a <coughs> four-sided edge in the illustration, I'm going to put a four-sided polygon. So that's it. This is now our base mesh, which is going to become our entire face. And what we're going to do is we're going to create one polygon at a time now off of this polygon. So to set that up, I'm going to turn off my angle snaps and I want to turn on my 3D snaps. I want to then right click on the 3D snap settings and by default it will pop up and it'll just say grid points. We want to untoggle grid points and we want to toggle vertices. And that's it. So only vertices should be selected. And then I'm going to say OK. And what are those, this will do now is wherever there's a vertex, it will snap to that vertex. And then I'm going to go over here under the editable poly. And under the polygon menus, make sure you're in polygons. It's very common for people to forget and stay in vertices. And uh, I'll show you what happens when that happens. But I'm going to go to polygon mode here. And then I want to say create. And watch what happens. I'm going to click once right on that first vertex. Click again over here. Click again over here. Click again over here. So that's four clicks. And then on the fifth click, it's going to draw a polygon. So the way it works is you have to cl click once to start the, the polygon. And then you click five times. When you click back on the original vertex, then it'll create a four-sided polygon for you. All right, so I'm going to do that one more time. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here click here, click here, and then click here, and boom, creates my polygon. So I can just keep doing that. So I want to show you what happens. I'm going to just undo this real fast, what I just did. And I want to show you what happens if you, um, I just did it. If you accidentally stay in create mode, but you're in vertices, watch, I just keep clicking and it just keeps creating vertices, kind of out in space. You do not want to do that. Uh, those are very problematic. You can create a few hundred of those without even knowing that you were doing it. And then to chase them all down and delete them is a real pain in the butt. So uh, make sure that always that you're in polygon mode. And notice that what happens when I flip between modes, the create button stays active. So you also, also want to right click to make sure you exit the create mode. So I'm just going to move this vertex back again. Watch what else happens here. When I have my grid snap or my vertex snapping turned on, uh, what happens is there's an attenuation to it, 
And if I get too close to another vertex, it's going to automatically snap to it. And I just want to position my vertex right there at that point, but look what happens. It, it's so sensitive. So what you have to do sometimes, if you want to position a vertex uh, without having it snap to another vertex, is you just have to zoom in, and then you'll be able to move it without it snapping to whatever that close vertex is to it. So basically, when you're out here, they're just too close together. And when you zoom in, you remove that tolerance, and then you're able to, to snap. And I'll show you that a little bit more uh, as we continue building out this uh, mesh and we get in some of the close spaces like the, the eyelid here. And uh, I'll demonstrate how that works. All right, so let's keep going. I'm going to go into polygon mode. Again, that was create. And then you click on the first vertex. Next vertex, next vertex, next vertex, and then finally when it loops back on itself, that's when it creates the polygon. You want to try, and it's kind of hard uh, the more complicated it gets, but you want to try to keep the same direction, so either clockwise or counterclockwise for your creation of your polygons. And the reason for that is because the face normals will orient based on the direction that you actually create the polygon. So I'm just going to keep going around. I'm going to build this one really fast. And then I'm going to take a break and make sure you guys are copacetic. Mine's making a triangle instead of a polygon. Okay. Uh, just give me one second. I want to complete this action, and then I'm going to come around and help you guys with your issues. So you can see how it goes really fast once you just start flying. And notice how I'm also, I'm building the section of the face which is often referred to as the Robin mask because it makes a mask that looks like what Robin wears of uh, Batman and Robin fame. All right, and now I'm going to exit that mode and I'm going to pause the video and come around and help you guys with your issue. Okay, guys, uh, so some of the mistakes that people were making um, were that they were trying to draw their polygons in a perspective viewport. And so I just want to demonstrate what happens. Notice I'm in a front ortho here, orthographic viewport. Watch what happens when I go and try to create a bunch of polygons in the perspective viewport, okay? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hit F4 so that we can see. And I'm going to go into my editable poly, polygon, and I'm going to do create. But this time, when I click, Look what happens. So, Whoa. yeah, that polygon is crazy. The reason for that is because the perspective viewport has no reference for where you want to place your point in space. And what it does is it just kind of makes a guess. But if we, and it guesses poorly, clearly, but if we tell it, if we start drawing things in the, the 2D orthographic viewport, what happens is it will place it all on one plane. And the plane almost always is just the origin. So whatever the, the or original plane is here. For, and so it's best to create these in the orthographic front viewport so that you keep all your points planar. It's not the end of the world, however. Let's say you do make a mistake. And you know a lot of people have a tendency right now to, uh, to accidentally tumble their views. So I'm going to go ahead and just hold down the Alt key and accidentally tumble my view. And so it's not tumbled by that much, so I maybe you couldn't really tell that it is, but I just did it. And watch what happens. I'm going to click again to create. This one probably won't be so extreme as the last one. And for some reason, it's only snapping now. Strange. Oh, I just did it. Uh, I accidentally started hit creating in vertex mode. And so what it's doing is it's just dropping a bunch of vertices. All right, so I'm going to exit that. I'm going to get into polygon mode. And I'm going to go ahead. Notice I'm in this tumbled orthographic viewport. So it's definitely not an ortho. It's like kind of a, it's an orthographic viewport that has perspective. <coughs> it's similar to a perspective view. It's just got a very long lens on it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into create mode here again. And I'm just going to create a polygon to show you what I'm talking about creates a new one and see that polygon I can't see it. The reason for that is if I hit the F key here and then I go into the top view, look at that new polygon that was created. 
It's, pers it's correct in two dimensions, its placement, but in three dimensions it's completely wacky. So I could fix that by just selecting, I'm going to untoggle my uh, my viewport here and I got a stray vertex from when I made that mistake. And I'm going to select marquee select all of the vertices in my scene and then if I hit the R key and scale them down in Y what will happen is eventually I will make them planar and compress them all down to a single plane. All right. So not all, all is not lost if you accidentally do that you can fix it without having to redo your work. Uh, but the best way to, to, to prevent that is to just have it not happen. So always be careful to make sure you're in a front orthographic viewport. And if you are, it'll say front right here. Watch what happens when I tumble it. Changes to ortho, orthographic. So if I hit, I just use the hotkey. So F is front, L is left, uh, T is top, and P is perspective. So what I'll do as a force of habit is whenever I come to an orthographic viewport, I'll sometimes just hit the F key to make sure that I'm in a, an ortho and I haven't accidentally tumbled it. All right, so F, whoops, I just did it. Uh, F key, front, there we go. All right, so now we're going to keep going. And we're just, we just built that little edge loop right there. And now we want to continue on. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to go into polygon mode. And I'm going to say create. Turn, on, turn my snaps back on here and I'm just going to keep clicking around. So keep clicking around. That one, see, I, I just uh, jackassed out and doubled up on it. So if you hit the uh, control Z here, if you make a bad move with this tool, it's really awesome. All you have to do before you complete it is just hit the backspace key and it'll back you out. So if I drop a vertex and I don't like where I dropped it, I just hit the backspace key and it takes me out of my last. So I'm going to keep going here. And this one, it's a little bit hard to see in the illustration, but you can see two little blips of blue. That means there's actually two vertices in there. So I want to make sure that I get in close here. And I end up with two vertices there and not a triangle. That's very important. And then I just keep going around. And it seems kind of tedious at first. <clears throat> but um, here's a case of my angle snapping is messing me up. So I'm trying to create this vertex here right next to this one. And it's too close and it keeps wanting to snap. So in this case, I just have to zoom in. So I'm going to go here click here and then now I've gotten sufficiently close and my distance between my two verts is enough that it's stopping uh, wanting to snap there. So the way to look at this is we're doing a little bit more work on the front end here of our model but it's going to pay serious dividends in the back end because once we start going to change the shape of this thing and add the detail, add the edge edges and the detail where we need it, um, everything's going to be in the correct edge flow based on the structure of the face, but uh, in addition to that, based on uh, character rigging friendly. All right, so we're just going to keep going here. I finished the uh, Robin mask, and so now I'm going to come down here to the nose. Okay, keep going. And then everyone goes quiet. And that's how I know that everyone's building their control mesh.
Okay, and then we come back up to the second portion, second ring around the nose. Also, there's a, a little bit of a shortcut here. If you click, click, and then double click on the third vertex, it will also draw the triangle without having to make that extra click. Uh, either way, I kind of prefer the, the five click method. And now I'm going to come in here to the inside of the nose. Again, I'm getting some snapping here because I'm too close to the other vertex. So I'm going to hit the backspace key and I'm just going to zoom in here because I need to build my nostril shape. And then finally I'm coming inside to the lips here. It's worth pointing out that this mesh that we're building is extremely low resolution. So you really do not have uh, nearly enough edges to actually define a face. This is just kind of like the bare bones uh, number of vertices you need in order to have this edge loop uh, spec. Are we doing the whole front or we stay around? The We're just doing this section that I just drew here. So <coughs> that's it. And then we're going to do the rest after that. Okay, and then I just want to finish the lip. So for any of you guys with uh, questions, I'm going to finish the lip out and then I'm going to come around and help you. All right, so the lip, the way we're going to build it is it actually is not going to touch in the center. We're going to have it so it's going to be slightly open. So I'm going to do these polygons here to here to here. And then we come into the corner here. And this one is a little weird because it has a co-joined, but then it gets unjoined here. Oops, did that wrong. So I want to go there, 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 and there. And then now I can start drawing my other polygon. And we kind of want to keep this gap not too big. It doesn't really matter. We can change it later. But keep it fairly tight. You don't want to make it like wide open. Like the Home Alone kid. Okay. And then now would be a great time for me to save my work as well as you guys if you're at this point. So I'm going to click the little plus key to here to save another rev. And you, uh, once you're done, it should look like that. Got the complete mask built. If I pop over to my perspective viewport, I can see here that if I right click and say hide unselective, I've got a face mesh that's completely flat. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's where we want you to be. I'll come around and see how you guys are doing. Okay, so again, uh, I'm going to, now that we've drawn this out in two dimensions, we have this flat kind of masky looking thing and now we actually need to distort these points to be three-dimensional so that we get uh, not only the edge flow but then the actual positions in space so it starts to resemble a head 
So what I like to do in the beginning is I just like to do these one at a time and kind of the old uh, walk before you run or crawl before you walk uh, methodology. We're just going to do one at a time and I'm going to select this point and if we notice here I'm just going to look in the front orthographic viewport. I select this point. I know that this point is on the green line here. So if I pop over here to the side view I can see here that here's my green line so that goes all the way around the perimeter of the head. So I know that this point goes to that green line so I'm going to pull it out to the green line and now what I need to do is correspond it to an edge loop. So it's on this edge loop which starts here and then wraps around the side of the face. So it's the one just above the eyelid here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where that is in my side ortho and I'm going to say okay there's that eyelid edge flow it's this one right here so it goes green and then it goes along this edge flow. That's it. Easy. Okay, and then I'm going to go and just do another one, one at a time, all right? It is possible to do more than one at a time. I just want, you know, we want to crawl before we walk and then walk before we run. So I'm going to go ahead and move this one forward. Where does it go? It goes on the green line. Well, where's the green line? Here's the green line. So I'm going to move that forward. And then I want to correspond it to an edge loop. So where does it go? It goes to the edge loop right below the one I just did. So it's this one. So I pull it out to the green line and then this edge flow. This edge flow starts to get lost in here. That's okay. Uh, these points, uh, it's worth noting that from front to side reference, they're not going to line up 100%. They're not going to be spot on. Your job is to just ballpark them. So if there's a discrepancy between them, you just kind of split the difference. The key is to just get everything in the right position so that uh, later once we get into actually sculpting the mesh all the edges are kind of in the right place. All right, so they will not line up from view to view. See how this one is kind of off in this view it's also going to be a little off. It's okay. No biggie. You just gotta, gotta roll with it. It's not going to line up. Alright so I'm going to go to the next vert here. It's on the green line. So I'm going to move it out to the green line. What edge flow is it a part of? Well, it's this edge flow right here. This is the one right below the actual eye socket. So that looks to me like this edge flow right here. So I'm going to pull this guy down a little. And then this one could also come down a little. All right. And then I'm going to keep going. So grab this guy. Pull it forward. And now I can just kind of follow my edge flows down. These right here, this is a great example of where it may make sense to grab more than one vertex at a time because these are kind of bunched in tightly together and I also know that that segment, the lip section, is all kind of on the same plane. So therefore I'm going to grab all those simultaneously. But check it out, look what happens, I missed one. So it's got to be this one. So I'm going to pull that one forward. And then now I'm going to grab my lips again. And there's going to be areas also where it, uh, it's not really, you're not going to really be able to see quite what's going on. And that's where we're going to have to use our brain a little bit. All right, so we're just counting edge flows down. So it goes, this is the one at the base of the nose. So the next one here is the top of the lip. This one is kind of the interior of the lip. Remember we left a gap in the lip. So this next one is the bottom of the lip and there's a gap there and then this one comes out to the front of the lip front of the bottom of the lip and then now that I'm confident with myself and what I'm doing and I kinda have the flow of this I'm gonna go ahead and grab all of these guys and I'm gonna start doing more than one point at a time and so these guys go here here and this one goes underneath to about there. That's it. All right. So it still doesn't look like much in my front or in my perspective viewport. Just kind of looks wacky. That's okay. So this time again, now that I'm walking, I'm going to go ahead and select this entire group. And I'm just going to pull this entire edge flow 
down to the nose and I'm going to bring those guys front forward. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to bring them out farther than they need to go. Just kind of like out here. And then I'll move them back one at a time. So this one in terms of color coding, that last edge we just did was the green. This one is that baby blue. What happens is these are so flat at the front that they almost overlap each other. So in this case, the point, you just need to make sure the point goes to the right edge flow, which is this one. And then it can get pulled forward. And the baby blue is like almost right on top of the green. And then the next one, same deal. That's baby blue and green. Coincides to this edge flow here. Keep going back. Next one down. And then these guys, I'm just going to do those all at once. And then I don't really have any reference for these. You just kind of have to wing it. Okay. And then now if I pop over to the perspective viewport, it should start looking like something a little bit. You can see here that this is kind of a nose, starting to look like a nose. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and grab the next set of points. And I'm going to just do them on the side of the nose because the nose actually has uh, a different number of edges to it. Whoops. Accidentally did something I didn't want to do. The nose has more edge segments than the rest of the face. And so I'm kind of treating these uh, special. Here, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull these guys out forward, kind of past where they need to go. And then I'm going to come back here into my side ortho and just move these into space. So this goes to the orange line. So over here, I can confirm that there's the orange line. Again, they don't line up 100%. They just kind of line up. They're close, but they're not perfect. So if you're sitting there trying to force perfection, you're barking up the wrong tree. And then I pop back over to the perspective viewport again, check my work. Okay, cool, it's starting to look like a nose. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Next line over. This time I'm, gonna, I'm just getting ballsy now. And I'm gonna grab the entire row. And we're gonna see if I'm forever shameful of this move. So I'm move them all out. This one, I believe, is going to correspond to the yellow line. I just want to double check. There it is, yellow line. Yeah. Okay. And then I just keep going down. And if you'll notice here, the yellow line and the orange line almost overlap each other. And then watch out for areas like this where we have um, the interior of the eye. So we've got these two vertices here that are bunched together. And what that is is that's this section right here. And so, uh, again, I don't know that we're going to be able to see the interior of the eye from this vantage point. So I'm just going to kind of put it where I think it goes, which is somewhere. It's, even, it's occluded. We can't even see it with the reference. So I'm going to put it right back here. <coughs> somewhere, bless you. And I'm going to keep going down. So this one goes to the yellow line, which suddenly comes back into view here, now that it's no longer occluded. Okay. 
And then we go here from this corner pin here, it went from yellow to blue, and I just want to confirm that that's correct and that I didn't make a mistake. As well as the placement of my internal eye, that was a little bit off. So here it goes from yellow to blue, that's cool, that is what it does, so okay, good. I didn't make a mistake, I can keep going. So my next one is going to be on the blue line and kind of down and in here. This one is the bottom of the mouth, blue line. This edge flow, second one. So if you just get the first lines going correctly, the rest are just kind of really easy. And see how now it's starting to look like something? We got a nose here. If I unshade it here for a second, we got a nose, we got bridge of a nose, and lips here. Kind of half of a pair of lips and then a chin. So I'm just going to keep going. Go back to x-ray view on this guy. Uh, I like to check the perspective view to see which ones I have left. And I have this little eye section here that I missed. So I'm going to pull that forward. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, act like I know what I'm doing again. And select a whole bunch simultaneously. Again, I'm pulling them a little far forward here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put them back. So I just want to confirm, always, it's the most important line is that first one. So that first vertex, you want to make sure that it corresponds to the right thing. So this one is the pink line. So I want to check the pink line in my front viewport. And that is correct. That's what I'm moving, so it's good. And then now it's really, once I've corresponded to the pink line, it's just a matter of <coughs> picking the correct edge flow on down. Okay, pop to perspective, check my work again. Looking good. Almost done. I'm going to continue to select uh, more than one at a time here. For these, it's, rear, it's all bunching here in the corner. I got like four vertices all occupying the same space. So I'm going to select all of those simultaneously. because that's the corner of the mouth. So sometimes where it gets really busy, it's just maybe a good idea to grab them all. Okay, so this one is the blue line. So I just want to make sure that's right. Yep, blue line. This edge flow right here.
Oops. Actually made a mistake there. So it's blue line. And then down. I believe that's the corner of my mouth where these all bunch up, so I'm just going to do them all. And we're kind of on the home stretch here. Checking my work here. Starting to look like a face. And I'm going to grab the interior of the eye here. The corner of the exterior of the eye. And put those in position. And then these guys here. And then that's it. We're on the home stretch here. So there we go. We got our face. Looks like our guy. And I just got to put these in position. So this technique works for anything. So if you have a bunch of stylized characters that you've designed. Uh, you can draw your curve network right over the top of them. Kind of plan your network, your edge flow, before you even uh, build the model. It's really, really, really a fast way to work after we get past the initial tedium. So again, you have to do some shaping yourself. Okay. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and right click and say hide unselected. And that's where you should be. You may want to do things, some uh, fixing in here. For example, my nose in here is a little janked up. That's normal. going to pull these points into position a little bit here. It's a little bit of sculpting. When I'm pulling points in perspective view, especially in max, I like to keep my movements constrained to one axis at a time. It keeps things from getting out of hand on you. And so there we go. I just wanted to fix that nostril up. 
And now would be a great time to save, so I'm going to go ahead and say save as. <coughs> and I'm going to click my plus key here to save another iteration of my file. And I want to check and see how you guys are. Okay, so now we have the, uh, the head modeled out and distorted correctly. So the next phase of this project <coughs> is going to be to uh, basically draw the rest of the mesh for the head. And probably the easiest place to do that is in the side orthographic viewport. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and say unhide all. And then what I want to do is I want to select the face mesh that I've already made here. And I just want to hide it temporarily. So I'm going to right click and say hide selection. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into my side ortho. And I'm basically going to build the rest of this entire mesh. All right based on uh, this uh, diagram here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing we did in the first place, where I'm going to create a standard polygon plane. And I'm just going to create it right there. And that's my first polygon. And then I'm going to right click to get out of plane creation mode. I want to confirm that my segments, length and width, are one and one. I'm going to hit Alt X to make this thing semi-transparent or X-ray. And then I'm going to right click and say convert to editable poly. When I do that, I'm going to just go ahead and move these points here to line up with the shape. This one goes to the top of the ear. And then now I'm going to go into uh, polygon mode. And I'm going to click on create. I want to turn on my 3D snaps again and make sure I'm in vertex snapping. And I'm just going to go ahead and start creating polygons. Now if you'll notice here in my illustration I've got some lines that are kind of floating off into no man's land mm -hmm. and this green line especially right here reason for that is because there is a green line back there, but it's actually been occluded by the blue line. So we're going to go ahead and draw it anyway, even though we can't see it. And then we're going to distort that later to fit our mesh. So I'm just going to keep going. Again, the, uh, the blue line starts to disappear, or the green line, and that's because it's actually been occluded. So I'm just going to kind of draw a polygon out here at the perimeter, knowing that I need one there. And then I just keep drawing down. Remember, we already drew this section of the face here, so I'm not going to draw that. I'm just doing this portion. We have a few sections here behind the ear where the ear also occludes kind of where the network goes. And so in this case, we're just going to kind of 
uh, fill in the blanks using our brain. Okay, and then now I've got all the triangles I need for my head. It's completely done. And you know, it's the exact same process as before. I just need to do one vertex at a time. I'm going to turn off my 3D snapping here. And I'm going to start one vertex at a time here. So I selected uh, this one here. And now I need to reference this point, which is green. It's on this edge flow to... Uh, where it goes on this edge flow, which is green. It doesn't move, all right? Then I want to get the next one, which is the blue. And this one very simply just has to come over here to the blue. Next one is the orange. So I'm going to pull it over here to the orange. Get it on its corresponding edge. Grab this one, move it over. 
This one is yellow. Get it to its corresponding. The next one is pink. So we'll pull it over here to the pink one. Next one is blue. So I'm going to pull it over here to the blue one. And these are a little bit farther apart, so it, you don't have to do so much brain work <coughs> to figure out where these go. It's pretty much uh, it's fairly obvious. This is why it's a good idea to check your perspective view every once in a while. I uh, completely got some of my points crossed here. And I'm not quite sure how I did it, but I did do it. And then now I'm starting to get my viewport intersecting my mesh. And so, as always, I just want to pull that back to get that out of the way. Okay, so at a certain point here, you can notice that we're starting to run out of, from the front viewport, where these points actually go. And so what we're going to do is the head is essentially flat on the side. So up to a point, we're going to just say that basically those vertices should be semi-flat on the side until we need to start figuring out where they go again. So these are kind of close together, all these guys, so I'm going to pull those 
all at once. And then so, also again, so it's worth noting that once you've built one of these guys, you just keep reusing it until you come up with a new edge flow. But i got to tell you that this edge flow um, has been in use for quite a period of time. So unless uh, your project had a different set of requirements, uh, this one's pretty much uh, good for pretty much anything you can throw at it. And now I'm just kind of grabbing an, a bunch of these at a time and then deselecting as I move them in, into position. And I've run out of reference. At this point, you feel you can feel free to switch over to a. Uh, I have an image of the back of the head. And it kind of shows you where those go. You can also do this by just using the uh, existing lines in the front viewport and kind of mimicking where those go. I'm completely comfortable though because the back of the head I kind of know what it already looks like. I'm comfortable winging it.
Okay, and then once this guy's done, I'm going to right click and say hide unselected here. And we may have a little bit of cleanup to do in terms of the shape of the head. I know that you said that this, it's going to be off from one to another, but mine seems to be like way off. Okay, maybe um, I, I did notice in the last class, if you don't make your um, your reference planes square, so if your reference planes somehow end up being non-square, uh, then that will cause that to happen significant. Another thing Leland just did is he apparently, um, he just took one of the planes and moved it down a little bit, and he said that helped him. But uh, it's very important, though, that you make your plane square. If you don't, then yes, you're going to have issues. But they are never going to line up. Okay, so it's always going to be, uh, you're always going to have to do a little bit of sculpting. You know, nothing's going to be 100% automatic. So I just shaped this head a little bit after I created it. Uh, again, I have a uh, reference plane for the back if you want to use it. You can see here I just did it without it. Um, it's fine. I know that the back of a head is basically round, so uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel like I needed it. So it's up to you guys. All right, so now that I have the back portion of the head done, I can right click and say unhide all. And then I'm going to grab my two ref planes and I'm going to say hide selection. There we go. We got our dude. It's relatively on. So all I got to do is merge these two meshes. So whenever I merge meshes, I always like to select the largest one first. So I'm going to select the large one. And then I'm going to go into uh, my editable poly and I'm going to say attach. I'm going to click the smaller one. And then now I want to go into vertex mode, and I'm going to use the target weld. And because I spent so much time on that front portion of my face, I'm going to move the vertices for the back half, the low detail, to the higher detail. And then I'm going to go to wireframe for a sec, just so I can see that. And then, there we go. We got our base mesh for our head. Uh, now would be a great time for me to save this model, so I'm going to do that. And then if I want to see this thing turbo smooth, all I'm going to do is turn on the NERMS. And kind of looks generic. That's what we want. Yeah, pretty much blue man group. Now if we want to go ahead and shape this, I just want to show you how that works. All right, and I, want, I like to use the nose as an example. So, uh, and then we're going to do more shaping on this. So. Feel free to shape this. You definitely want to keep a copy at this level so that uh, if you do shape it and you do a bunch of stuff to it and it doesn't turn out that well, you can always get back to this one and redo it. Uh, again, this is my base mesh for creating any head. So once I build one of these, I don't have to build one again. I never do it. I always just start with this guy and then that's kind of like ZBrush. Well, you guys don't know. Uh, it's a base mesh. You open it up, all the edges in the right place, and then you shape it. Uh, to whatever you need it to be. All right, so now if I want to uh, get this to look like something or I want to improve areas of it, I'm going to use the nose. I'm going to turn off my NERM subdivision. And let's say I want to give it a nostril flare. So if I want to do that, how do you guys think I need, what would I need to do? Yeah, I need more edges because right now two edges there for a nostril flare is not going to cut it. So I'm going to select one of my edges here and I'm going to say ring. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect it. And I'm just going to do, whenever I connect, I like to just do one at a time. 
So I'm going to say OK. And then what I do here is I'm going to grab a couple of these verts and pull them in. So I'm building the side of the nostril here. And then I'm going to grab these and I'm going to pull them out a little. Okay. And then I think I need another set of edges here because the nostril is going to flare out from the side of the face, but it's also going to have a little bit of a shape. Uh, top to bottom as well. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to ring it. And then I'm just going to accept it here. And then I can give my nose a little bit more shape. And I can pull this nostril flare out a little bit more. Maybe these want to go up a little bit. Okay, so it's starting to have a little bit of character, a little bit of flair. Now what I probably want to do is I want to add another edge loop. So I'm going to select here and I'm going to say ring. And then I'm going to say connect. Say OK. And then now we're starting to get somewhere. Because I actually have enough edges to get a nice little crease in here. And now if I pull these guys out, and then I'm going to need one more. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say ring, connect. So you'll notice here real fast you can start ranking up, racking up some edge loops on a head. And that's just because, I mean, there are so many compound shapes going on in a head model. And there's going to be some haters who are going to say, you don't need that many edges in a head model. And I'd say, yeah, that's fine if you were working on, say, uh, you know, a Nintendo circa 1991. Uh, you probably would be able to get away with a lot less uh, edge loops. But if you're working on a next-gen game or you're working on a feature film, it's all about the edges. And the displacement mapping, which we're not even going to get into in this class. Okay, so I got a little bit of a nostril there. And uh, at this point, I probably just go ahead and nerms that out and just see how I'm doing. And we're starting to get somewhere, right? Starting to look like a nostril. We definitely have a lot more shaping to go because we probably want to pull this down. We also want to add a curl under the nose. And I just want to show you how that's going to work. So right now, our nostril is wide open. I'm going to go ahead and hide. And so I have a lot more work to do on this. This is by no means done. But I certainly have enough edges now to get that nostril shape. And I want to show you how you're going to do the interior of the nostril. We're going to come in here. We're going to turn off the nerves for a sec. I'm going to go into border mode. I'm going to select that hole. And I'm going to cap it. Now once I've capped it, what I can do here is I can extrude it. So, or bevel it either way. Bevel probably works a little bit better here because it'll actually allow me to shrink it down. So I'm just going to recess it a little bit at first. Say OK. And then I'm going to bevel it again. And now I'm going to recess it some more. And I can have it taper up and in. And then I say OK. And that's kind of how it works. Then you're going to need more edge loops also. For example, this right here probably is not enough edge flow to get a nice shape there on that nose. So I'm going to say OK. And with every edge flow that you add, you're going to do a little bit of shaping. Just like we did with the body. OK, probably need one right here. So I'm going to select this one. And I'm going to say ring. And then I'm going to connect it. Say OK. And now if I wanted to do a little
crank here in the nose like so you can do that and so on and so forth I probably would definitely want to round this nostril out a little bit as well so I'd select this one and I'd ring it and then I connect it and then here's a case where I could maybe just oh, not gonna let me say okay where I could just maybe pull this down a little here to round things off a little bit Same thing here, if I leave that the way it is, it's, it's going to just be kind of a hard edge. So I'm going to pull this. Alright, and then in the uh, interest of time here, I'm going to pretend like uh, that's okay. And there we go. We're starting to get something that's looking more and more like a real nose. Honestly, the amount of edge loops I have on this thing right now, it's pretty good. So if you guys are wondering, you know, how many edge loops you need to do a convincing nose, it's about this. You might want to add like one more in here. Um, and from there, you should be able to kind of build almost any nose shape you want to build. Um, so this is a good number right here. All right, the next thing you're going to do is, same thing, we, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to weld this thing together, but you may want to mirror it. So I'm going to go ahead and mirror it, and I'm going to do an instance. Say OK. And then notice how my shells don't exactly line up. That's fine, because all I need to do here is select this one. I'm going to turn the norms off for a second. Go into border edge. Select that border. Uh, go into edge mode here. And I'm going to, whoops, deselect these internal edges and the ones on the mouth too and then now all I need to do here is grab my scale tool whoops and somehow I got accidentally got into squash and stretch mode so I'm going to change this to uniform scale and I'm just going to scale down in X here until I flatten these guys out along the plane and then now when I go ahead and mirror this guy No, in this case we don't. Because there's not going to be a crease. Because there's not going to be a crease, that's right. Alright, so then I would just norms these guys out. And um, I'm going to leave that shell alone. So at a certain point, uh, you're going to want to weld these together. Uh, but we'll actually get to that to the next time. So I'm happy if you guys shape your head and getting it, get it looking pretty good. And then uh, you don't have to weld it yet. We'll do that in the next uh, section. All right. Uh huh. And play the Halloween music. How does that go again? It's like the, it's like dee -dee 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 or something. Yeah. That sounds like cold play. Um, all right. Cool. So that's it. Uh, same thing goes though for adding like detail to the eyelids. You notice how whenever I added an edge loop, it went to the right place for. Uh, adding details. So this, again, I can't stress how, how friendly this, this spec is for putting the edges exactly where you need them to flow for the places where faces actually have detail. So you're going to you, you're gonna like it if I would have had you do the other head. <laughs> and then you would have seen how hard it was to get edges to flow correctly. Um, but instead, you're starting out with this one. So, What's that? It has to stay a man. <laughs> yeah, it's got to stay a man. All right, so that's it, guys. Um, for next week, that's what you're going to do. I definitely want you to shape this thing um, a lot more than what we just did here. This is just kind of a base mesh, and then I started to shape the nose. I want you to build the base mesh, shape the nose, shape the eyes, eyelids, uh, shape the lips. Um, basically, get it to look like something. If you want to make it look like a celebrity and you're that good, I say knock yourself out. <laughs> For most newbies, to just have it look like a human being is enough. Um, so if you want to stop there, that's, that's awesome. 
All right, so good luck, guys, and we will see you next week.